Okay, we're live. Katie Ann is here today um, sharing Quiver. And I'm so excited because she does so many incredible things with augmented reality specifically and just really pushing the boundaries of what is out there and done. So for her to come in and show, share Quiver is really cool. And I'm super pumped to hear some of the stuff that her class does and some of the resources that she has out there to share with you all. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just lay it over to Katie Ann to go ahead and introduce yourself. And I'm just going to broadcast you so everybody can make sure they're seeing you. Oh, just kidding. I'm going to show you. You're going to be Brad. Okay, present to everyone. Let's try that again. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Hold on real quick, Katie Ann, because you're muted. You want to unmute? There we go. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, now I'm going to have feedback. <laughs> okay, well, I'm Katie Ann Wilson. I have been a computer science teacher for, this is my 14th year. Um, I started teaching when my son was um, first day of kindergarten, and now he's over at K-State studying computer science. Imagine that. Um, so I got into augmented reality, oh, gosh, over five years ago. Um, it was just briefly mentioned in a conference I was attending and I had them, I was like, stop, I need to know more because this is really cool. And ever since then, I've just, um, it's been my thing, it's my niche, it's what I love to do um, with kids and I brought it into my classroom and talk about oohs and ahs. And my very first augmented experience um, was with um, with Erasma because that's what the presenter showed. But for me to actually use it was with, at the time was Collar, um, which is now Quiver Vision. And um, they have interactive coloring pages that are augmented. So you color the page and then you use their app. And you have to use their app to activate it, you can't use a QR code to scan it. Um, it has to be the Quiver um, app, and they have a couple apps now. They have their um, Quiver, their regular one, they have their education one, and then now they have a fashion one. Um, and they're coming, and I can tell you, they're coming out with another one, um, which I kind of seen, and it's kind of really, really cool what their, their ideas that they're working on, um, but I can't tell you any more about it because um, it's not there yet. <laughs> so it's a little teaser. There's something really cool coming around the corner. Um, so you have to keep an eye on their website. And um, they're also um, developing what is called an education portal. Um, they have brought in some ambassadors or we're training some ambassadors. Um, and I get to lead that. Um, we have, I want to say, 25 ambassadors, and the educational portal is going to be like a one-stop shop where you can go and um, access lessons and activities, and plus also get the ambassadors' lessons and activities and see what they're working on and connect with um, them and get help with um, using augmented reality in your classroom. So it's not just me anymore. I'm, I've got some nice friends that are joining me, and we're... Um, developing this little portal where you can go in. It's in the works. Um, they're developing it, and I've seen some of the lessons that the ambassadors have shared out, and they're really cool and really interactive, and I've tried to um, write a blog post for those um, through the Quiver, and I'll show you that on the website, um, a blog post um, on the Quiver website um, with the different ambassadors and their lessons, so just to give you a taste of some of the stuff that's coming. So let me go ahead, if I share my screen. Oops, do you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, so um, if you go to Quiver, their homepage is going to look like this and it has instructions, you know, print, color, bring to life. Um, and you want to go um, to the Media Hub, that is where their blog posts are. And that's where you're going to see um, some of our ambassadors. And I'll be adding to that. Um, it's kind of time consuming working with 25 ambassadors and trying to get all the lessons and stuff. Um, but we're getting there. So we've got, um, we've got Amber McCormick. She's in Florida. And she has a lesson 
Um, and then we've got um, Bobby, Brian Bobby Lewis, um, who's also an ambassador, and he has a lesson. And we'll be adding more. Like I said, there's 25 of these. Um, and they each have two to three lessons that they've shared with, um, with us. So we'll be putting those on the blog post, and then we'll be putting them all in the education portal. So this will be interactive, and you can go and get lessons. It's coming. It really is. They're working on it. Um, I've seen some ideas that they're putting together. It's really great how um, interactive it's going to be. That's um, so awesome. that's, that's where you can get some lessons. So it's coming. They seem to need that people our teachers are asking, how do I use these? They're great coloring pages, but can we go beyond? Um, yes, we can. We definitely can. And I use them a lot. So to get to the coloring packs, they have three um, three different apps. Like I said, they have their regular quiver, their education, and now they have fashion. The quiver one will have some free things, and you can see if it says free across it. Um, if it costs, they're going to be like in-app purchases that you have to kind of purchase to get access to the augmented part, and you'll see the dollar sign for those. Um, and the reason they can offer some free ones is they've um, gotten partnerships with other companies like Ford, um, Starbucks, um, let's see, um, there's been others, Dover, um, that they pay to have these pages made, and then um, Quiver, Quiver can offer them to teachers um, to use. Their educational one has some different ones. They have some and similar, and then some that are a little different, like they have their space and their vehicles, and they'll be adding more to that. And you pay for the app, so it will be like a one-time fee, and whatever they add to the educational, you'll automatically get it. Um, and you can do volume purchasing, and I think they're looking at doing subscription um, so that it's more manageable for schools to have access to it. Yeah. Um, so they have some of those, and they have some of their educational starter ones. Like, if you click on them, the pages will open up, and you can see the different ones. There's the plant cell. The flag is really cool um, because it has some pre-built flags in it, and then you can design your own, and we do have a lesson activity for that. A volcano that's interactive and has quiz, um, a quiz built-in feature. Um, the world will become, the map will become the world, and you, there's so many things that you can use that one for. Um, and even has, if you go in closer to it, you can start seeing the night sky, and you can see um, the lights from cities, like all of Las Vegas is all lit up compared to the Midwest has hardly any um, in the United States. So it kind of gives kids a perspective about electricity use of uh, population. Um, and their space one does something similar to that with stars and planets. And then there's the animal cell. And all you do is download these pages and you color them, get their app, and you scan it like you would a QR code and it becomes interactive. And I had on my Diary of a Techie Tech blog site, I do have lessons. If you click on Augmented Reality um, tab, you're going to get all the things I've worked on um, with Augmented Reality. And my newest one is um, Penfold, their Quiver's Penguin. And it has some ideas how to use that in the classroom and books that you can use to go with it, or writing prompts, or some other activities, vocabulary. Um, and there's two different pen fold ones, one with a snowflake and one with a snowman, and they do different things. So they're, they're interactive and they're really fun. Okay, so let me go back, stop sharing my screen. Do you see me now? Yes. Yeah, that is awesome. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions because, okay. um, let's see, stop presenting. Okay, there we go. Um, so when you're creating these different um, coloring sheets, what is the biggest problem that you see teachers having when they're using these? Um, the biggest problem I see when, uh, one was um, kids. Some kids don't quite get that they have to use that app. Um, they think, they see the QR code at the bottom um, and they think they need a QR code reader. Well, that is to redirect the person who's scanning to get the app. It doesn't do, do the augmented part. Um, and I also see if co kids color really, really, really dark or over the lines, it may not work. Mm -hmm. um, you have to 
use your best judgment. Um, if a, say a four year old's gonna color the entire sheet blue, well, you may not get it because they colored over the lines and the, the app has to see the lines in order for it to trigger. Um, all that um, is built into the design of the pages. Um, so the different lines is how it triggers. And um, that's why they can have penfold, two different penfolds because they have two different sceneries um, for penfold and each one would trigger something different using the same app. If that uh, makes sense. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I think when I've been doing this with kids, one of the things that I think teachers are like, that, oh, that's really cool, but you know, that's just we're just coloring sheets. It's like because oh, we go be on that. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. There. Okay. So, um, thank you for bringing that up. I can um, show you. We do well. You could do it with spiral notebooks. But I do it with folders or interactive um, notebooks. And I have kids, and I print them off the coloring pages, um, half sheets. So I have two on a sheet. Um, and the kids, and we did like a back to school. We did the summer one. Can you see that? Yeah. And the kids um, colored it, and then they wrote about their summer trip. And then they um, had to do a revise and add what happened when they scanned it. So I'm we're learning revising right away. Um, and then um, kids can't did um, the dot day. And they had to design their dot, and then they had to write an essay. And they just write on the paper, and then they type it up. So they're learning um, how to transfer to the computer. Um, they write an essay on how they could leave their mark in the world. So um, I have their coloring pages. They glue them in their folders or interactive notebooks. And then um, their notes are all around it. And they can do sketch notes if they need to or whatever their note style is. And like the Penfold one, uh, we're going to do vocabulary. So they're going to have their vocabulary going all the way around um, Penfold. Um, plus, you know, he's interactive. So then they can kind of see okay, this is what snow looks like, and then they can start describing snow um, and, and, and include the vocabulary for that, like Arctic and blizzard and, you know, the different words that would go with a snowflake. So are you in an area where you guys get to experience snow? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cold, and it feels like it's going to snow right now, but it's not. Um, but the it's kids are exciting. Can't wait. I know, I know. We... <laughs> We here in Texas, you know, we don't see a whole lot of snow, so it's always an exciting adventure when snow. But you know, they don't have that connection, so to offer it in a way with augmented reality gives them the illusion that I'm experiencing snow. You know, how cool is that? Yeah, and the writing assignment that I'm having the kids do with the the snowflake and penfold is how can they describe playing or catching in the snow, seeing it from a different perspective from somebody that's never seen it. Um, because in the game, you have to go chase a snowflake to catch it. Mm -hmm. um, and then it gives you a score of how many you caught, which then you can use for graphing and data collecting um, too, which I would do if I was doing spreadsheets right now, but I'm not doing spreadsheets. Um, we did that with the, their soccer game. Um, the kids had to make goals in the augmented part, and then they had to graph it. Um, so they have the coloring page in their notebook, and then they have their data um, on the page. That is so awesome. Like, so, what, you know, it's really just thinking, like, there's so many possibilities to use this beyond. But they just, I see how easy it is to get just so tunnel vision into, this is all it's intended for. This is all I'm going to use it for. But just taking anything and allowing it to be a learning experience for anything, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and people say, well, you're just coloring. Well, teachers use Play-Doh, they use colors, they use blocks, they use um, different things that kids can actually touch and feel mm -hmm. um, because that gives them emotion and experience and then they connect the learning to it. Um, so yeah, we use toys to learn. I mean, that's how you learn. <laughs> well, and I know you're gonna have to leave here in a moment because you have classes coming yes. here soon. But w is there anything that you think would be if somebody's just getting started with Quiver, what would your recommendation be for them to jump in? I know you showed the website, you showed where to get the packages from. Like what would be the first thing that they should try out and get started with their kids? Um, I would start off with the dot page and have the kids just experiment and draw so that they can see what they draw, put on the paper does pop up and it's interactive and it changes. Um, just so that they can get the, their mind around that, whatever they're going to put in that area that's augmented, they're going to see in the augmented world in a different way, different perspective. 
Very Which would be, then be a writing assignment. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Gosh. Everything. I mean, math, science, technology. I mean, all of it is really incorporated. And I know your time's coming up, but I did manage to get um, my dot colored in. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty pitiful, um, but I'm going to show that after we get off just so if somebody has not seen what this does I think it's cool to really get a grasp of what that looks not cool on my end because this could be a lot better But you know, we'll run with it and talk about it. But um, thank you so much Katie Anna. Really oh, thank you for having me <laughs> Well, thank you for representing quiver vision too because man that is fantastic what you're doing with the ambassadors That's awesome. No, well, thank you. All right. I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye all right, so looking at what um, I have it on here as color because, of course, that's what they used right. to be called. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Katie Ann. Feel free to hop off whenever you need to because I know your bell is going to go off. Yeah, I'm going to have to go. So I'll see you. Okay, bye bye. Bye. All right, and just looking at the app, um, it used to be called color and um, I still have some of the old stuff because that's what I used to share a lot on. But now being called Quiver Vision, um, that it is renamed on there, but I can still scan. So I'm going to give a pretty lousy demonstration of what you can do with a circle. Um, I've done much better basketballs, by the way. Um, but we're going to go with this. So here is um, the app. I went inside the app. And actually, I'll show you from the beginning just so you can see. When I first open up this free app, um, I am able to go to the bottom where that butterfly is. And then when I scan my page, it wants to see the full page in view. So it's kind of giving me a red view saying, ah, I can't see everything. But once it gets it in green, you can see my page, as long as it can still see this page, has become three dimensional. So I can look at it from a bunch of different aspects here. It's really cool. Um, in addition, down at the bottom, I can actually change um, some of the things that that sphere turns into. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to do this here again. Hopefully not get too much of a glare on there. I apologize. All right. Oop. Saying, hey, you don't even have that pack. Well, that's probably because I haven't. I shouldn't do, choose upload. That's my problem. So once I do that, though, and I actually get that scanned and get the experience, I'm going to choose not upload, but the other button. And it, oh, now the ball is bouncing. So my basketball. That is a funky basketball. And so then it flattens. And so I can go through this and think about this. Um, these little circles just kind of floating around. Um, what I thought about this is something Melinda Forward does is a Thankful Thursday. How cool would it be to write like a thank you and to go around and scan them and see those like little words of thanks to somebody or some sort of graphic about that person that really brings to light your thankfulness towards them. How cool would that be to see that kind of floating around and just scanning and experiencing that? Um, another one here is um, this bird who will start eating this worm. Um, it was some of the first ones with, that we got to experience with color, which was really just mind blowing. At the time, it was something that we were just blown away about. But since then, I love that they've come out thing, with things like the volcano and really getting interactive. So I can actually touch on my device the pieces of the volcano. I can actually feel it erupt. My phone starts vibrating to let me know it's erupting. Um, and see it erupting. So I'm looking at for, from different viewpoints. So to have an experience like that um, for students is really something that does not leave very quickly. So we might say it out loud. We might say it 10 times out loud to a kid. And we know that it is difficult for them to retain everything said in school. And oftentimes we're saying it in a way that's not really that their preference. But this is really exploratory through gaming and fun and interact. I'm going to end now. And if you have any questions from Quiver Vision, um, I'll make sure to link it on the website with tiny.cc slash ARVR and EDU. All of the resources and videos from all these different events are all located in one place. So it makes it really great to have the um, all of these resources. And Katie Ann does incredible things with augmented reality. So follow her. 
Um, she does a lot there and anything that I can find there, I'll try to retweet and share out as well. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more resource in bringing augmented reality into your classroom.